Hi, Drew here again. Another episode of the Phase 3 351 Cleveland engine build. So, uh, join us today. We're going to be talking a little bit about uh, what's going into the cylinder heads and uh, some details to do with those. So, uh, it's it's been an interesting journey over the years to find out more and more. My knowledge of the 351 uh, Phase 3 engine has evolved over the years. Uh, initially, my ideas of the 351 uh, Phase 3 engine, uh, it, I linked it a little closer to the Boss 351 than I potentially should have. Uh, forward engineers over here and, and the mechanics, uh, as they probably got together, they came up with their, a lot of their own unique things. And uh, we'll go through a couple of things now. Over here, um, I'm going to grab the camera again, turn it around. And uh, let's have a look at some details to do with the cylinder heads. Here are our 351 Cleveland 4V or 4 Venturi, as they're uh, technically known as. The correct terminology is 4 Venturi or the, the 4V heads. Um, they're more easily identified if you call them a big port head because Australia uh, in the... Um, from 1973 onwards, produced their own 4V351 engine, which was a small port variety. Now these heads that I have on this particular engine, these are what you call the early heads, which have a four. The later 351 Cleveland heads that came out probably mid to late 1970, were the four dot heads and they they had a dot just before the four right here and so if you've ever heard anyone say oh have you got four dot heads on your cleveland that's what they meant so there was a number four and a dot right here now this particular number i believe i believe ford designed that number to signify that these were actually four barrel or four V heads to go on engines. Now, back in the day, just to, just to make sure that the people picking the parts um, off the shelf were absolutely clear on what heads went on what engine. And so we have uh, a four here and there's, there's no way that any uh, parts picker off the shelves or the parts bins at Ford would have been able to uh, you know mix these up because the small port 2V versions had a 2 cast right here of the same year. Now Ford didn't continue that as they went on producing 351s through the years. They just they deleted this and uh, over the years uh, this space just became empty. There was no numbers, no identifying features in that part of the cylinder head. So uh, let's move on. The Phase 3 engine, to my knowledge, has just the standard 351 Cleveland 4V heads. And from reports that I've heard, Ford used the standard hydraulic heads and machined the rocker arm pedestal here down to a, a particular height and then they drilled and tapped it to suit a 7 16 stud and this same uh this same machining was done on the boss 351 cylinder head now i'm not sure and this is this is where i think that uh i'm a little bit confused or or a bit perplexed more than confused about why Ford decided that they would machine their cylinder heads instead of just importing the Boss 351 cylinder heads that would have been just a bolt-on ready to go. Uh, the camshaft that, that Ford used in the Phase 3 was bigger than the Boss 351 cam, so they probably thought, well, maybe we can change the valve springs or maybe we can use another set of valve springs that we can get out of our parts bins. Um, and from my knowledge, 
Ford used a single valve spring, not a dual valve spring. Now, a single valve spring uh, that Ford used on the Boss 302 and the Boss 351 was similar to this. You can see here, this is a dual valve spring with a dampener. And Ford in the Boss 302 and the 351 used the same valve spring. It was a single with a dampener. And uh, I believe that Ford Australia hopefully would have used a better valve spring. Maybe not. Maybe they thought that that valve spring that uh, Ford had in their parts bins for the Boss 302 would have been fine. And, uh, and so valve springs, to my knowledge, are still a question mark to me. I'm not sure what Ford used. Maybe someone can let me know uh, in, in the comments as to whether or not they can confirm that Ford used a, a, uh, a double or a single valve spring. Now, while we're on the, the a topic of valve springs, um, the Boss 351 cylinder head had a, a spring seat machined. Sorry, the, uh, the surface of the spring seat was machined flat. Let me take off another one because that has a shim under it. The surface of the valve spring was machined flat. Ah, oh, sorry, the, uh, the, the spring seat was machined flat. And then Ford used something similar to this. This is a factory Ford spring seat. And it's a stamped steel uh, arrangement. It, uh, it's about 80 thou thick. And this one is an aftermarket spring seat, which uh, I've machined so it fits on the on the uh, the spring seat that, that's been machined flat. And so this is to locate the spring uh, very nicely onto the cylinder head. And you don't want to have any movement there or maybe a couple of thou clearance, but uh, or at the most maybe 10 thou clearance. So Ford used them with their single spring on the Boss 302 and the, and the Boss 351. And I believe that they used the same spring seat, valve spring seat in the phase three. And uh, so true to the phase three, I'm putting spring seats on this particular application. And uh, unfortunately, I don't have the correct Ford uh, retainers. So we're using these aftermarket steel retainers. They're a standard installed height. So we're going to end up with the same installed height as a regular 351 Cleveland, which is about 1.85 inches, give or take a, you know, a, a tolerance or a couple of thou. And um, so uh, that's, that's so far what we've done to these heads to make them like the phase three. Now, just getting back onto the point of the machining, the cylinder heads, um, I can't understand fully why Ford Australia may have gone to the trouble of uh, disassembling the, the 4V hydraulic heads and sending them to their machine shop. Obviously, they had access to a machine shop their own or maybe outsourced it if they didn't have the correct machines handy just to do this run of, of Phase 3 engines because they would have had practice during the Phase 2 engine. The Phase 2 engine would have had these screw-in studs and guide plates fitted to those heads as well. So maybe they were set up with the equipment to be able to, to, to do that. In any case, I think it would have been much easier for Ford to import the Boss 351 heads. They didn't have to do any machining. They already had the screw and studs and guide plates fitted, springs, valves, everything they needed to put these heads straight onto a, a 351 Cleveland that they built over here. So, uh, you know, I believe that there's a high likelihood that Ford used the Boss 351 cylinder head. Now, according to all my uh, research, the Boss 351 cylinder head was had the forward dot because it was the, the Boss 351 Mustang came out for the 71 production year. And so those heads would have had the forward dot. And from all the reports and research that I've done, most 
if not all Phase 3 engines had the four dot heads. Not all of them may have had the, the D block, but certainly they probably would have had the four dot heads uh, because Ford were going through the, pr the production runs of the 4V engines and heads and by the time Ford needed the ones for the XY Phase 3 project, then they would have had, um, you know, the, the later castings. Now, uh, let's just have a look at some of the things that, that uh, are in these particular cylinder heads. You can see that these are the single groove collet valves. They have an 11 32nd stem and the, uh, the, the valve keepers or the collets are here. You can see them, they're uh, just a single groove, uh, 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 1132nd collet or a valve keeper. And I've put aftermarket uh, seals. This one here is a, a red Viton seal for the intake. I like that seal a little bit better. On the exhaust, I have a crane nylon seal. It seems to uh, be more heat resistant uh, for the exhaust valve position. Uh, let's see what we have here. Also, let's just turn this head over and we can have a look at the chambers. That is the classic quench chamber uh, 351 4V design. So that's in keeping. You'll notice that these heads have not been freshly machined. These heads are spot on. Uh, from their last, uh, I guess, service, or they were in service, and there was nothing wrong with them. I didn't want to take any more material off the cylinder head. I wanted to leave as much parent metal on the head as well, uh, which, which helps keeping the combustion chamber to the correct volume, and, uh, and also intake manifold fitment can be affected by taking a lot of material off the cylinder heads. So... There's still uh, a decent amount of thumbprint left on the cylinder head there. I haven't machined it all off. So these heads still have some service life left in them. Now these heads, um, they have the aftermarket stainless steel valves. And uh, they're the standard size, 2.19 on the intake and 1.71 on the exhaust. And, uh, and so... We're keeping with exactly the same thing as the Phase 3 had, except we have the, the aftermarket stainless steel valve, which is just an exact copy of the standard valve. And uh, these heads, um, I have... Let's just turn this around if we can. I'll show you the other side. You're all familiar with the, uh, the, the 4V intake port. Sorry, that's just a, a couple of spots of uh, water rust where a couple of droplets left. Now, these are the, the 4V size, which is huge. Probably a little bit too big for what Ford needed, but the head designers at the time thought that that was a nice size, especially if they wanted to use these heads in any sort of racing application later on. Now, you'll notice here, uh, I have filled the heat riser or the, yes, the heat riser port from the exhaust valve port to underneath the intake manifold um, for two reasons. Australia does not need a, a heat riser to heat up the intake manifold and to heat up the engine quicker. It does that just fine all on its own. We do not live in a sub-zero climate, so that's all fine. And also, when you block off the heat riser, you also uh, correct any flow uh, obstructions or misflow direction in that exhaust port and it acts like just all the other exhaust ports in the engine and so there's there's no problems or inequality between all of the exhaust ports and so I, I think that that produces a, a better smoother and uh, potentially uh, higher power level in any engine that has a heat riser coming off the exhaust port. So I've blocked them off. Now these heads also, I've, I've done a little bit of work. These heads 
had had a little bit of work on the uh, the short turn radius on the both intake and exhaust uh, throats and so I just tidied up the short turns a little more to what uh, the backyarder had done and so there's what you'd call a, a low to medium amount of port work done on these particular 351 Cleveland heads they, they probably flow just slightly better than a standard 351 4V but they're certainly not ported out to, uh, to race spec like would have been done on so many engines back in the 70s and 80s to these heads so they're, they're not virgin heads but they are a pretty close to standard head at, at a phase 3 spec so these are the heads going on I hope uh, you may have learned something or may have had some things confirmed about these 4V heads on the phase 3 engine and so next next time we'll probably uh, get more into the uh, the valve train as in the push rods uh, rocker arms and fulcrums and the guide plates which uh, are unique to the 351 phase 3 motor and the or they're the same as the boss 351 motor actually so uh, hope hope uh, this has been informative and we'll catch up next episode